All right, we're going to start out as far as like specific positions uh, with the double seated position. And we're going to first talk about inside control. So if I've just knocked Rory down, let's say, you know, I got um, like a double ankle sweep, knocked him down, he got to his butt. I've already got inside control. So if we land here, cool, right? Um, out of a tripod sweep, we're almost there. Cool. Out of Della Hiva, we're not quite there, but we can pummel in. So yeah, we thought like we got to start with first. This is a position that we're always ending up in when we're finishing a lot of different sweeps. Yeah. And then the best control to get is obviously double inside control, so that you have the availability to be able to technical stand up in multiple ways. Exactly. So with the the sort of key points to this position one is if I've got both my legs to the inside, it's going to be a lot easier for me because there are no obstacles for me to switch my legs and start to get to a technical stand up. And as long as I'm creating enough uh, tension and appropriate wedges, my partner should not be able to remove their legs. Like if I'm just kind of holding like this and Rory can hobble out, then that doesn't help. The inside control doesn't help me very much, right? Inside position is, inside position is becoming so vague a term that it's almost like connection now, or it's like it means anything and everything. Uh, obviously I have inside position, but the actual uh, degree of wedges and lever control that I have is going to determine how successful I am. So hands will be over top of the ankles, fingers will be underneath the Achilles tendons, and forearm will be over top of my partner's foot. So anything that goes to the outside, so now you know, Rory has the inside position and he can start to pummel it out. But if I create, even if I'm to the outside here, but I create a bit of pulling tension, and Rory goes to circle. Like, he can't wait, even though it's just my thumb, which is normally like weak as shit for controlling a leg. The tension because of the, of the tension of my shin against his knee pit, there's uh, not enough potential energy for Rory to really break free of this. If I just move my shin a little bit, oh, uh, exactly. So invisible jiu jitsu. Yeah, exactly. So th no, that doesn't mean that you should do it that way because obviously there's a certain level of redundancy that comes from doing this. So rather than relying on my thumb, to cover his foot, I'm going to rely on my forearm. The idea is to, to cover, cover his foot. yeah. The idea is to cover my leg 360 degrees. If Rob does not have good shin connection, he's blocked the outside of my leg, but not the inside of my leg. I can circle. If he grabs like a thumb grip like this, he's blocking obviously at front here, but not properly at the back. So the easiest way is to go covering on the outside with the arm, blocking the inside with the leg, which means he has to flare his knee open to really put some tension with the side of his shin and the side of his leg here that opens up my knee, which also affects my structure. Yeah. And now, oh, this is, I can't move this anywhere near as effectively. Yeah, and it, very much like we talk about the gap in a grip, right? Like when we're gripping a two-on-one, we wanna cover the gap with our complementary hand. Then in same thing, 360 degrees of coverage. So as long as I, there's no direction in which Rory can take this leg to remove it, I'm good. And it, this shouldn't require a tremendous amount of like tension, it's just like, enough right like it's a, it's a little bit of an isometric push i'm not doing a max effort sort of thing i'm just gluing my elbow to my body or uh, uh, bringing my elbow tight enough that he can't take his foot out while leaning on it so here i'm really just using gravity at this point to enable the control and then on this side i might be using a little bit more tension and i might be kicking him forward as i remove this leg and I can complete the technical stand up from there. Yeah. So, so one of the things that we had talked about before was the idea that a scramble is just a race to base. Mm -hmm. And so when you're first learning this, take the time to just get comfortable on this one. We're making just this its own video <laughs> yeah. because there shouldn't be a rush. Now, obviously, if it's nogi, if it, uh, people are sweatier, it's a little bit harder to control. But you mm -hmm. should feel comfortable knocking somebody down and really holding that position for a good while because you have such strong control and obviously the gi. And the gi, you, you'll get the, uh, the confounding factor of while I try to withdraw this leg, if Rory grabs the pant leg here and pulls on it, it will make it more difficult for me to actually withdraw that leg, which is very uh, tricky for him to achieve in nogi. But even if he's doing a good job of that, I can still post on my knee. I can still find enough of a base just by post switching. So that would be an example where we include post switching as a, as a method for enabling this inside position thing to work. So Rob obviously has the no gi control there and that's honestly something that we recommend even in the gi because it's really exactly. strong lever control. This but, is a stronger lever control. But Rob can certainly have this grip here. Yeah, this this totally works. Uh, I think the it's, it's inferior lever control, but it's superior in terms of like you being able to break the grip. Yes. Right. This is a very it's strong. It's hard for you to cover my toes because your arm will naturally take this grip and migrate to the inside of my yeah. leg. So this leg will always be a little more free. 
But well, he's not. Matter. He's not gonna get rid of it. And this would be a very easy time for me to base switch and start lifting that lever. Right? So it, any of the like you know the previous uh, videos where we talked about the, the 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 distinct movements that we'll be using, you can sort of plug those in to fill any gaps that we end up leaving throughout these videos. We're gonna try to be as comprehensive as we can about these situations, but there will always be a level of adaptability where you're like, oh, I can't quite make that thing work. Why don't I post switch or why don't I create a weak plane? Why don't I circle the hips? So well, that's why we gave you those videos so that you can, to a certain degree, troubleshoot, even though we're gonna try to make this as like idiot proof as possible. There are idiots out there that are not proofable.